Well, good evening. Um, I'm reading a, some scripture from Matthew chapter 5. This is where Jesus begins to talk to the people on the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus goes and gets up into a elevated area to project his voice. He's talking to the multitude here. Not only is he talking to the multitude, but I believe that he's actually also, he has his disciples uh, listening to the words that Jesus is saying. Um, he opened his mouth and taught them. And then he starts in that third verse and goes all the way down to verse number 11. Blessed. That word blessed there in the Sermon on the Mount means happy. It would be like the Lord would be saying, say in verse number three, happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All of these here that it lists the word blessed means happy. You can be happy when men come against you. You can be blessed when people make comments, harsh words. You can be on the upside of their attitude and their argument that they might have against you. But listen to what Jesus says in verse 11. In verse 11, Blessed are ye. Now, this is referring to the believer. This is not referring to everybody, even though that everybody is listening. But this is the person who is a believer, just like where it talks about in here, uh, blessed are the peacemaker. Blessed are the merciful. Um, he's referring to ones that believe in Jesus. So in verse number 11, it says, Blessed are ye. Now the ye is the people that believe. When men shall revile you. You know, I end up taking a lot of heat from time to time. There's a lot of times I come out here and I make a video and I'll get some smirk remark. And I just chalk it up as the word of God is going to be direct and to the point. And a lot of times people, they don't. They don't tend to, they don't tend to care. I mean, they don't understand who they're fighting against. This verse in verse 11, it says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. You know, there's a lot of people that don't like to be criticized. They don't like to be reviled, as this verse here says. I looked up that word revile, and it meant to criticize harshly. I've had my share sometimes of being criticized, but I don't get up in the morning just looking to tick somebody off. Um, a lot of times I'll come and find a message like I'm doing today, because somebody sends me an email and I happen to look at the uh, words of the email and the verse that they send me and how that, that verse applies to the situation of people that are born again, saved children of God. He says in verse 11, blessed are ye. He's assuming that the ye 
is the people that believe in him. The people that don't really believe in him is not going to care much about being reviled. They have a tendency of being a what we call a silent Christian. I don't really know how that could even be possible that there would be a such thing as a person that is a voiceless Christian, but I think they're out there. I don't think that God is going to ultimately bless the ones that are silent. See, a person that is going to revile me has got to hear something that makes them mad. And when we've got this attitude that we don't want to make nobody mad, we tend, we have a tendency to stay neutral. I've done a message one time on staying neutral. There's a lot of people that are neutral when it comes to the ways of God. They don't want to be reviled, so they keep their mouth shut. It's just easier to keep their mouth shut. Don't start nothing. You have nothing to finish when you don't start anything. Yeah, I could come out here and read my Bible and be faithful to my Bible. But if I don't ever put it on video and I don't ever take the time to share what my my thoughts are, is anybody going to revile me for anything that I'm saying if I never post this? I'm not coming out here to, on purpose, revile somebody. But yet there's times that I will be reviled, I will be criticized because I'm using my God-given abilities. And if you want to say it, God-given talent to come out here and be able to tell you what the truth of the Word of God is, there's too many people that are not being reviled because they ain't doing nothing to be reviled. What does the Bible say? Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, criticize you. As long as you shut up, there's nothing to criticize. It says, and persecute you. If you keep your mouth shut, there's nobody that's really going to persecute you. Nobody's going to say nothing. Oh, we'll all sort of jump on the political bandwagon. And, you know, I've got my political authority or my political beliefs. And there's others that got a total 100% difference in the belief. But how many people persecute them, whereas when I come out here and I bring a message based on the Word of God, that I get a certain amount of persecution because I'm using the Word of God the way the Word of God is saying it right here. And persecute you. People don't want to be persecuted. People don't want to be persecuted. Leave me alone and let me do what I want to do. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. All manner of evil against you falsely. Meaning they tell a lie. There's times that I brought messages that people would take my words totally out of context. Totally from what the message was all about. And it says here, And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely, Listen now, the next part, for my sake. 
Now, are they doing it with the permission of God? That's not what that means. For my sake, they're saying things that is against you, but they're actually doing it to me. See, Jesus is seeing that there's these harsh things that are coming out in verse 11. When men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. They're not necessarily doing it to me. If they can feel that they can shut me up. That's just one more less voice. I look at it a lot like this. When I eat food, I like a little bit of salt on my okra. Not a lot. I don't want to drown it. I want it just enough for the okra to be good. My job is to sprinkle salt. And hopefully sprinkle salt on somebody that would happen along by this channel by this Facebook page to make people aware that they're not actually reviling me. They're not actually uh, persecuting me and shall say all manner of evil against me falsely. They're doing it against God. If I'm his speaker and I'm speaking on behalf of the Lord, they're not doing it against me. They might be doing it against me, but they're not doing it just for me. They're doing it against God. They think they can shut me up, so that's just one more or less person we got to tolerate. And, you know, there's times that I wonder why I only get a few lookers. And, you know, I've got to the point that I really... I really don't let that bother me as far as me bringing a message. I looked at this verse two or three times before I come to put this on video. And the more I read it and the more I understood what he was saying was, there's going to be people that's going to be reviled, but a person that is in neutral, nobody's going to revile them. Nobody's going to persecute them. Nobody's going to say all evil against them. See, they're not going to do anything. They're not going to witness to anything. It says, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. I think Jesus actually said the words for my sake. If you go on into verse 12, you know what he says at that point? Rejoice. Rejoice. Be happy. I'd rather be counted with one person listening to this message and it affecting the one person rather than having the attitude, no, I'm not going to make a video. And so, therefore, nobody will criticize me. I don't look to get criticized. I don't check my YouTube and my Facebook to see if anyone criticizes. In fact, it's the opposite. I look to see the people that would say amen or someone that could say thank you. I had a lady to send me a thank you three times, one behind the other. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, them are the kind of words that makes your message, especially if it's God's message, it makes it worth it to come out here and do it. Am I doing it for the thank you? No, I'm doing it because I feel like number one is the truth. And if there's a thank you that is that goes along with it, then I guess there's a thank you that goes along with it. I'd like to be able to know I can be that little tiny bit of salt to be able to help somebody and to help somebody's day. He says in verse 12, rejoice. 
Now, what is he saying to rejoice over? He says, rejoice and be exceeding glad. Now, what, 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 what is he saying that for? He's saying that so that when men may revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely, for my sake, rejoice and be exceeding glad. Glad for what? Glad that you are being reviled. Glad that you are being persecuted. Glad that people are saying all manner of evil against you falsely, which is a lie. People lying about you. I don't like nobody lying about me. Let them print whatever they want to. It's not going to affect the bottom line. The bottom line, it's not going to affect me. It says in verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad. What is he saying? Glad that I'm being reviled. Glad that I'm being persecuted. Glad that people are saying all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake, rejoice and be exceeding glad. Listen now, for great is your reward in heaven. Now, where does the reward come from? Where does the reward come from? It comes from being reviled. So if you're not reviled, the likelihood is you're not doing anything. Nobody's reviling you. Nobody's persecuting you. You know why? Because it might be that you're neutral and that nobody is reviling you. Everybody is not persecuting you. There's nobody that's saying all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake because people are happy to be neutral. That's the bottom line. As long as you're in a neutral position, you're not going anywhere. I made a video not long ago about I can get my car and crank up my car and mash the gas and mash it and rev the engine. But until I put it in drive or put it in reverse, the car's not going anywhere. And I think that's the issue right here when he says, for great is your reward in heaven. But if you've never been reviled, there's not much reward. If you haven't been persecuted, then there's not much reward. If nobody has said all manner of evil against you falsely, then there's likely very little reward because your reward comes from being reviled for you being persecuted question I'd have for anyone today, who out there am, am I talking to that, that has been reviled? Who's been persecuted? Who's been lied about for my sake, for the Lord's sake, is what he's saying. Rejoice. This is Jesus' words now. Rejoice. Meaning the person that is reviled can rejoice. A person that has been persecuted can rejoice in the Lord. A person that has been lied to or lied about can rejoice in the ultimate end. And the ones that is against you falsely, that speak against you falsely, for the Lord's sake, Jesus is saying here, rejoice and be exceeding glad, exceeding, exceeding glad. That is like a gladness times a hundred, exceeding glad. That's a gladness that just goes on and on and on. And why did Jesus say that? For great is your reward in heaven. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great 
is your reward. How many people is only going to get very little? Remember, there was a time that I held up my little cat right here. This room is probably a, a, a 10 by 12, maybe. If my reward was as the size of this room, but I get to heaven and all my reward is, is that cat. When God was willing to give me the whole size of this room, but I settled for the cat. It says right here, Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward. That is, if we have been reviled. But if you've never went through any ridicule, if you've never been reviled by anybody, the likelihood is that you've been in neutral. You've kept your mouth shut. I don't say you have to come out here and make an insulting video to just get somebody to revile you. I don't have a thing in the world written down here in front of me. I didn't come out here and plan this message to talk about the things that I've talked about. I read the scripture, I will admit, I read the scripture probably five times and I look back over it and I look back over it. But you know what? I didn't come out here to revile anybody. I come out here to ask you and to tell you that your reward is going to be great when the Lord sees that you have been reviled and persecuted and lied about, and been talked about falsely. But the likelihood is, if we've never been reviled, it might very well be because we never said nothing to be reviled. We've been in neutral too long. Listen at the last part of verse 12. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. See, the prophets had people reviling them. There was people that the people hated that was the prophets of God. And so if you go back and you think of the things that uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Saul, Stephen, uh, I could just, the list can just keep going on and on. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, look at all of the people throughout all of the Bible that was a prophet that the Bible says, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Every, far as I remember, every disciple except one was persecuted with death meaning they didn't live a long life. They killed them in one way or the other. I think they hung Peter upside down. I think they even split one person down the middle. A horrible death. Just a horrible death. There's only one that lived out his life to the fullest. And you know why he lived out his life to the fullest? is because God allowed him to write the book of Revelation. And that's where you see he was the last man to live out his full life because he was put on that island called Patmos to write the book of Revelation. I think it was written in A.D. 95. A lot of these other people, people like Paul, had already been killed. They all witnessed torturous death. I mean, horrible death. And what is Jesus saying to these people at the Sermon on the Mount? For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Let me ask you a question. Who's persecuting you? Who's speaking all manner of evil against you? Who's reviling you? You, can I tell you 
who is being reviled, the ones who's telling the truth. If you're not being reviled, the likelihood is you ain't got much truth that you've been sharing. So therefore, you're not much of a threat. You're not much of a threat at all. Elderly ministry is how you contact me. Um, I'd love to talk to anybody that needs salvation. I've got a Bible here open. I've got the time. I'd love to communicate with you and talk to you anytime. There's a phone number on that elderly ministry website you can go to and reach me. You can also reach me here on YouTube. This is the YouTube channel. You can reach me there as well. And leave me your name and leave me your phone number and I'll get back with you. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Thank y'all.